Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week we are preparing for winter, which sounds a little bit odd. Uh, most folks feel like winter comes probably in, you know, uh, fall, but it actually, you know, for us here in the Pacific Northwest where we're a little bit warmer, it doesn't actually come until January, February, March. So that's what we've been doing this week on the farm. Jay and I have just been checking through the lists of all the things that need to be checked on. And I thought I would share those with you just because you know we do this every year for years and you know some people are just getting into homesteading or flower farming or farming in general and maybe need to know a few things especially here in the northwest you can um, apply any of the things that we're doing this week to any part of the country just depending on your weather is when you would actually need to do it and as i've been going through all these things as my checklist and you know my mom just passed so um i've been thinking about her a lot in all my daily chores you know your mind kind of gets lost in the you know the chore that's at hand and so while I was thinking about all this and just kind of thinking about you know how the world is today and it's not really a lost art because there is a lot of people that do these kinds of chores or um, have this kind of knowledge but it's kind of learning to stretch the dollar um, in homemaking and that starts with my husband or I and teaching our children kind of how to do with uh, less or to maybe make things stretch a little bit further so I thought I would chat with you guys on that as well this week. So we're starting the new year we're gonna kind of have this pantry challenge. We want to try and go to the grocery store as minimal as possible. So wanted to take an inventory of our pantry, and it just really needs reorganized after the holidays. Stuff just gets piled in there, and people get in a hurry. So then you kind of lose stuff. You don't realize you have stuff in there. So we are gonna go completely pull everything out, reorganize it, see if there's any stuff that we don't use anymore that's no good that we don't need to keep. Do a little purging and then um, yeah we'll get it all back together and we'll get it reorganized. As I'm going through the pantry clean and checking all the dates on all the products in the kitchen and we're just taking inventory from what's in the pantry to what's out in the woodshed, what we have on the farm, what needs to be done. You know, I'm thinking about my mom um, just because that's a natural thing to do when somebody has passed. Um, they always come to mind, you know, when you're, you're doing something like this. And so I kind of created this little list and this is things that I do on a regular basis. Um, that are things that you know I think we're kind of a lost art for a while and is now coming back but you know now that the economy is a little bit tight you go to the grocery store and you don't walk out of there with less than fifty dollars to a hundred bucks and that I mean even for us here on the farm it really does kind of sting a little bit I don't know about you but for us it definitely does so I um, I've been really trying to hone in on my skills <laughs> my homemaking skills and just kind of thinking you know what did my mom do how did she make the dollar stretch I mean we had 12 kids on the farm so it was like eh. um, we we had a cherry farm growing up when I was really little we lived in the city and she always had a huge food forest basically and we grew from there she would um, she was part of a gleaners club and I don't even know if there is gleaners out there let me know if you are part of a group but as a kid I would go with my mom and we would follow behind the harvesters and pick things from you know like raspberries strawberries um, I remember doing peaches and apples and 
all the things, I mean, she had those things on our farm as well, but she stored up a lot of food. And I mean, it was hundreds and hundreds of quarts of items that she would make, huge pantry, um, just to feed our family. And so I kind of learned from her, there was that. And then she also ordered from Azure Standard. We just ordered a huge order this week. It ended up coming at like nine o'clock at night. It was ridiculous. And um, so we didn't get home until 10. Anyways, it was fine. It was dark. There was a lot of people. It just came early for us. So um, we were kind of surprised and we had to make room and you know, all the things. Anyways, she did those things. She also had, there was like a meat locker and um, I remember going with her and there was these lockers in this old, old warehouse and that was her freezer and she would order like pig, beef, whatever we needed and that's where she stored it and there was a butcher downstairs, if I remember correctly. It's no longer there, but I thought that was just the coolest concept. But um, as a little kid, I remember going and doing that and then when we moved to the farm, I think I was about 13, we had um, uh, Royal Inn cherries and us kids would work at some. Um, my mom, obviously was busy with kiddos we had a big garden we would do all the things and us kids kind of ran that part of it I don't remember too much of it but I remember that it was you know a part of our life for sure so now on our farm here with my kids and in the, in the times where we're at I don't have 12 children but times are tight and so I kind of thought I'd put together a little list here for you on what you know my mom did and as I'm kind of implementing a lot of these and actually do a lot of them already without even thinking about it. So anyways, so these are the skills that my mom had that are really helping me out this last couple years and I thought I would share them with you. So here it goes. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. This is when I first started kind of thinking about all these things that my mom kind of implemented on her in her life. And when we first moved here to Crowley House, my husband was in Georgia and I was here and it was about this time of year, January, February, and Brayden was really little and all of a sudden this like snowstorm came and I hadn't been watching the weather because I was busy working, running a farm, having little kids, and I had a car, you know, we, we just moved here, so I didn't, and we live on gravel road, two miles in, two miles out on a gravel road, no big deal. But here in Oregon, we get this really wet snow, and there's not a lot of snow plows, and for one, they will not, plow a dirt road. So it's not like that fluffy snow that just blows around. It sticks and it's heavy and gross and you just can't drive in it very easily. It's just kind of a mess. So anyways, my husband's in Georgia. I'm here. We get the snowstorm. It starts snowing. I get home and I'm like, you know, think, oh, I'll go to the store tomorrow. I'll do this, that, and this, the other thing. Oh no, it snows and snows and snows. And it, I mean, that's, that's not really common for our area. So then I had to think, okay, now I have to make bread. Now I have to build a fire. Now I have to haul wood. Now I have to make a trail out to the, you know, low tunnels and blow them off with my kids in tow. I had to do all these things and you just kind of did it and you kind of thought through it. It wasn't easy, I tell you that. I wasn't used to it, it wasn't easy. I cried a few times, my kids still talk about it. <laughs> I was so upset. I'm like, of course, every time my husband leaves, this happens. Anyways, enough of that. But that's kind of where I started thinking about all these things um, was then at that moment, like I need to get better at this. So I did. So bread making obviously was the very first thing I kind of honed in on and I just started with yeast bread. Then I got brave enough, you know, like back in 2020 when everybody else was making sourdough bread, I got brave enough to start, do my own starter here on the farm and then make bread. And now I do that almost every day. Um, we don't eat a lot of bread, so I have to be a little careful on, you know, how much, but my kids really do like homemade bread more than store-bought, so that's what we do. Um, learning those skills obviously takes time and you will fail and even now I still fail sometimes if I don't really kind of think it through but that's that's a good skill to have and she would make bread as well not always my dad ended up working for a bread company or a week and so then when that happened she kind of stopped but it was a skill she had for sure 
the next thing that winter I learned was how to build a fire. And our house is heated by wood. And for the most part, we do have some electric heaters in case we leave or do different things we can plug in. But the house has two wood burners, one in the kitchen and one in the uh, living room. The living room one is the one we use all the time, especially this time of year. I've gotten really good at building a fire, but if you haven't, you have a fireplace and you need to learn those skills before something happens, say a big snowstorm and you lose power for two weeks. That was the other thing that happened that, that year is we lost all power during that time. So that was fun. So preserving food, another huge one. You know, I learned this with my mom. I remember if you've read our book at all, standing in the kitchen and my favorite thing was to do the peaches or to do tomatoes. And I love to like take the skin off. It was like super slimy. So I'd put that down in the jar and you know, that was just fun to do. So preserving food. And now I find that if there's times where I don't want to go to the grocery store, um, actually we're really working on not going to the grocery store. That's our pantry challenge this year or this month is to just really use what we've already put away and stored up and frozen and that kind of thing. So um, we've been doing actually really, really good at that. It's super proud, but just preserving um, food and putting it up, learning how to do that. Um, that was something I learned from my mom, but there's, I know there's tons of people on YouTube that do all these kinds of things. And um, it's kind of fun to watch sometimes and get some ideas and inspiration because it is a lot of work. So, but it is absolutely beautiful on the shelves and it does give you the sense of accomplishment when you do all these things. So um, that's kind of fun. Uh, the other thing we've done here on the farm is just make sure all of our gas tanks are full. We have gas, you know, like cans, not tanks, but we do have tanks. So we have propane and we have, you know, um, just the gas itself for the generators. So I just make sure that those are all ready to go. Um, we make sure the generators, I know Jason was working on one of them and he got the other one, I think fired up. We're gonna check on that today as the day progresses. We'll see, He's it's on his list basically. So I'm out here working on the generator, um, just just checking it to make sure it's ready to start because you never know when we need it. The, two years ago we had, we were out of power for 10 days and um, so I bought this generator for that um, back when I worked for Napa. One of the brands that we like to carry there was BE, BE Pressure, that's a company out of Canada and they make generators that can compete with Generac or Honda but yet they're more of an affordable price and they're super reliable. We have here the 2100 watt um, inverted generator. Now if I bought a second one just like it, I could combine them together and create 4200 watts. So, and that would run just about anything that we need. When we were out of power, we would plug this into the studio where we have two freezers and a fridge and we would power two units at a time and we'd give it about four or five hours and switch a unit and then we'd switch it over to the house and run the refrigerator there. So it's got fuel in it. We're just going to see if it starts. The other thing that I've been really working on is really thinking through like things that we have in the house and really caring for them. So valuing the furniture, taking good care of it, using, you know, just making sure when I clean it that I clean it well and that we don't put any, you know, just a glass right on to a side table or something like that. Just really valuing what I own in the house and really thinking through if I do go antiquing or I go out finding new treasures for the house or I, I'm buying something new, kind of going through a step. Um, having an 1870s old farmhouse, there's no storage. So you really con constantly are kind of thinking, do I really need this? You know, is it just because everybody else is buying it? Is it because this is the look or is that me? Is this really for me? Do we really need this in the house? So those are the checklists that I go through as far as buying or purchasing anything. And that even goes for groceries. I mean, you can use that method there is like, how badly do we need this? You know, is it something, you know, like we do buy stuff, we're stocking up on, you know, things like flour, sugar, um, which sugar we, we use a raw sugar and I do keep it in the house, but we hardly ever use it. A lot of times it's honey and we have a lot of honey. And then there is oats. We like to keep oats, rice, you know, kind of those staple things, potatoes, root vegetables this time of year, those kinds of things we'll stock up on. And if I need more then like I just did the Azure standard order, which we got a few more beets. I want to make some things with and a few things like that. So it's always good to kind of think through those things.
That comes to homemade meals, really honing in on your skills of doing homemade meals. And if you struggle with that, my friend over at Elliot Homestead, Shay Elliott, she has an amazing um, cooking community. So you can go check that out. And that's, I did that for a while when I was just kind of struggling on making meals, even though I know how to do all these things, I just needed some inspiration. And so I jo joined her little club there and it was really fun and really great recipes. In fact, I pulled one out the other day of one of her recipes to throw together and it was, hit with the family. So honing in on those skills of trying to make things with what you have in the pantry, figuring out some staple meals that your family likes and kind of go with that. So you just kind of know how to make something. Gardening, that is a skill to learn over time. It won't come to you naturally. Some people say, I have a black thumb. You know, oh, I wish I could do what you do. You have a green thumb. I don't really, I just keep at it. It's just like bread making. It's just like home, you know, cooking home meals. It's all those things you just kind of have to do it. And if you had to do it, you would, right? If there was no restaurants, you would have to do it. So gardening is the same way. I suggest that you um, start small. You can start in a container. You can start on your back patio. Um, you don't have to do something huge. And some people just don't have the space, but you can really put together some vegetables that you like, that you will eat, that your family will eat, um, that work well for you in your growing space. We have a huge garden because we preserve a lot of food, but that doesn't have to, you know, you could go to places like, I keep talking about Azure Standard, but, and they're not even a sponsor. <laughs> so, but I, you know, we do, we've used them for years before they were popular to do. So, you know, like I just ordered in some potatoes and beets, you know, because we just didn't grow potatoes this year and the garden was pretty small. And so there's just things that you can do from companies like that, co-ops, like my mom, Gleaner. You know, you can do things like that if you live in the city, live in an apartment, have a small yard, don't want to grow veg. There's all those things you can do. Foraging, we do that too. So it's just all the skills um, needed to be um, self-sufficient a little bit and just kind of figuring out ways that if you couldn't get to the grocery store, if you couldn't grow your own food, how can I do it? You know, thinking outside the box. So just start with something easy and small. You can even buy starts if you need to instead of seeding, if seeding's just failed for you. There's nothing wrong with buying starts at all. The other thing we like to have here on hand, and because we live in the Pacific Northwest where the temperatures are mild, we can grow herbs year round. So herbs are something just to enhance flavor in any meal. Meat, casseroles, you know, you name it, you can, you can enhance a, um, a meal really easily with just a few herbs. So we do keep herbs on hand. Um, I have several herb gardens and actually my whole farm, it's just scattered with herbs, which is really fun. The other thing to consider is storage of water in some sort of filtering system. We have rain barrels here on the farm. We don't have a filtering system. Well, my husband has a very small one that he uses for, you know, hiking and camping and things like that, which I could totally use. We should invest in something. That's one thing Jay and I were talking about is just investing in something that could do a little bit more than just, you know, a couple cups at a time. But anyways, that's beside the point. So just think that through a little bit. Keeping water or storing water has its challenges on its own. So, you know, you kind of have to do your research on it, but we do have rain barrels here on the farm. Generally, I'm using most of it for water um, of plants and garden beds and things like that. So, but in a pinch, we could use it for drinking water. So the other thing that I have come to hone in on is cleaning products. So cleaning products can, like we use a lot of vinegar. I just add a little bit of essential oil in, so it can be whatever has 
essential oil just for a smell and that's pretty much the only cleaning product I use occasionally like we have a little bit of bleach that we use for our buckets because we've got to keep those super super clean you know there's baking soda does a good job of scrubbing and things like that so just kind of learning about different cleaning products that you can make on your own is helpful as well especially when you're trying to save a little bit of money because I mean cleaning products I love shopping for cleaning products I mean it's like one of my things but in the last probably five years I haven't done that you know I do buy in my detergents and things like that but they're all you know as natural as natural can be and um, it works really well for us here on the farm we do have a septic system so you kind of have to think about all those things and um, you know it goes from there so cleaning products it's kind of fun to make it's like a little chemistry you can get your kids involved it's really fun so the other thing that, that that winter that I was by myself, my husband gone, little kids, was honing in on entertainment. You know, back in the day, my family did not have a TV. So I actually, that came pretty easy to me, but we didn't have any way to watch anything. And I know a lot of kids, you see them, they can barely put down their phone or their iPad. They can barely have a conversation with you. They can't say hi, you know, it's just a different time. And I'm so thankful that my kids, you know, sometimes I'm like, why wasn't your cell phone on, you know? I have the opposite problem, partly because I grew up with no TV, using a creative brain and just making up entertainment. So both my kids have, you know, they like working on the farm. They both um, are super creative. It's not saying that my son doesn't love to play a video game from time to time. My daughter's face is in her Kindle reading books. You know, there are times that they have, you know, they enjoy doing those things. So I haven't limited it. Obviously they're adults now, so I, I don't do anything but I can suggest right we can suggest as mothers but um, not necessarily you know tell them what to do so entertainment when they were little <laughs> was kind of like, okay, um, let's do a play. Let's light some candles, you know? And so that brings me to another point. Now we have oil lamps and I have some beautiful oil lamps that are just stunning, but we also have just some, you know, like LED, you know, flashlights that are solar powered. So we can plug them into solar if we need lighting. So we have some pretty cool lighting systems. Uh, my husband worked for an automotive place company for a while. And so the, a lot of times they would send us like free things to trial and and that kind of thing so it was kind of nice to have some of these things that are you know pretty cool when you do lose power for over a week it gets a little old after a while you know at first it's fun but trying to be creative and and do all these things especially with little ones is really hard so you know board games books uh theatrical performances that was our big one growing up was we loved to put on plays my mom always had this huge chest full of dress-up clothes and we would like you know dress up and do all the things and have the lighting and my dad was very theatrical too so he'd read especially like um you know uh, lord of the rings you know um that was the main one but like books book after book after book and he just made it so theatrical um i tried to do that with my kids i'm not as good as my dad but <laughs> it worked some so one of the other things that my mom didn't do, um, but I do, is we raise some animals here on the farm for meat production, mainly chicken. Um, and then we have eggs, egg production, chickens. We have some ducks and we have one turkey, which is a COVID turkey. That one was one that my son hatched and raised and it's been fun having just a pet turkey on the farm. Um, anyways, but also that goes back to having, you know, like if I have stale bread that we didn't eat, goes to the chickens and just kind of figuring out the cycle of recycling things and putting things to use. Um, so not just throwing away your scraps, but you have a place for them to go, whether it's in the compost pile or like I said, to our chickens. <laughs> We like to eat sausage quite a bit. I would say like, you know, breakfast sausage or sausage for Italian, you know, pasta or whatever. But, you know, eight, nine dollars a pound, it gets kind of expensive, especially when you're not raising your own pigs right now. And we haven't raised pigs in a couple years. And so I decided Chef Store had 
uh, pork shoulder, boneless pork shoulder on sale for $2.29 a pound. So I went and bought a 25 pound package, so it was two roasts, and used my meat grinder and I ground it up. It's the first time I've done this, so I, I wanted to try some different recipes. So we tried an Italian. I made five pounds of Italian, and then we did um, 10 pounds of just ground pork. So we just took it and um, just ground it up, no seasoning, nothing. We can just use this. However, you know, whatever recipes we want, we can doctor it up later. And then I did um, 10 pounds of breakfast sausage, sage. This is like a sage sausage. And we, we did a test run on the sage and the Italian sausage. I think they both turned out really well. You can kind of tell the difference in the two. This one has your paprika and a little bit of cayenne, but that doesn't really like stuff spicy, so I don't. I try not to make it spicy. So you can kind of tell, you know, it looks, looks Italian. Now if I wanted to, I could take these and um, press them into tubes, but I just, we just like sausage loose like this that we can pull out, add to whatever we want. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna go in the freezer. You know, the last thing that I was kind of thinking of as far as my mom, and I was actually talking to my dad about it, and he was like, you know, you're kind of right, or you are right, not kind of right, I know I'm right. But my mother was so content, like, ugh. I'm like, I don't, I don't think I inherited that from her because I always love going out and buying new garden things, you know, plants for the garden, seeds, bulbs, you know, all the things. And I love buying things for the home to make it cozy and for each season. I love decorating. I love buying new spices or trying out new recipes. And my mom was super content. Like she, you know, yeah, she had, you know, kind of a mindset of always making it good and, and trying new things, but she really just kind of had this heart of contentment that I am just not there yet. So that's one thing that I've been kind of working on is like, okay, you know, this meal might be really simple, but it's good, it's nourishing, it came from our farm, it's blessing my family, and we're just gonna eat it. You know, it's not this, you know, high-end, you know, whatever it is, because my husband, he loves to cook. He's an amazing chef, and so sometimes we get into this level of food that you're almost fine dining every night, and then when I come in and cook, it's more like a casserole or something like that, you know? And the kids can kind of go, hoo <laughs> But, um, you know, it's what we had in the house and I'm excited that I was able to do it for them and put food together on the table. That level of contentment is something that I'm working on. Just to be thankful for everything that's provided for me, uh, the lifestyle I have. We're so blessed, so, so blessed. And just that I do have food, that I do have a garden, that I have beauty in my life with all the flowers that we grow around, that I'm able to, you know, keep the house warm with a fire and lit when we have no power, you know, for weeks on end. You know, these are all things, I'm just thankful that I have those skills and um, so, Anyways, well, I've rambled quite a bit on this video. And <laughs> so I think sometimes when somebody passes that you love very much, you tend to really think and examine your life and how short life is and what have you done and with your life. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm thankful for because if you didn't have those moments you wouldn't you know do self-improvement so anyways you guys got to listen to you know all my things that I've been thinking about in my brain for the last week or so here on the farm um, as we're preparing for winter that just kind of spurred this on and I rambled quite a bit on this video, but um, we'll get back to planting because that's what we are doing. We're filming it still. Lots of moving parts this year, of course, as always, I feel like. Oh, ranoculus, sweet peas, anemones, you know, tulips. We just got another order of tulips, which they had lost. And now I just got. And I think there's some uh, narcissus in there. So we're going to be planting some things in the next coming videos. I just thought this one was a good one since we were doing this anyways this this um, week. I thought I would just share it with you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and much success in all you do and grow. And we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.